when it comes to Raw every week, I'm not always that concerned about having a great three-hour show every single outing because, let's face it, three hours of television is tough to write every week, and I don't care what great plans you may have laid out beforehand. It doesn't always go well. So not every show is going to be great from beginning to end or be a great watch all throughout. This week's Raw was a perfect example of that. However, however, it did what it needed to do, in my opinion, and do it very well. Ultimately, especially, in particularly, when you're on the road to WrestleMania, you need to do those things that hype up WrestleMania as the biggest show of the year. You need to give us those segments and those moments that captivate us, that enthrall us, that get us to look forward to WrestleMania as the biggest show of the year because it is the biggest show of the year. I'm not going to talk about everything on Raw this week because a lot of it, frankly, to me, doesn't need to be talked about. Because, in part, this wasn't a great show for the entire three hours. No question about it. It was not. But it provided those moments, those instances that reminded us how fun it can be to be a professional wrestling fan and how important WrestleMania 30 is. The WWE did their job this week, and frankly, I feel like they did it very, very well. To me, when it comes to the WWE pertaining to WrestleMania, I always feel like they like to have four kind of featured, if you will, headline matches heading into WrestleMania. They want to kind of have it spread throughout the card and give you those four kind of signature matches and then fill in the rest of the pieces along the way. So at the beginning of Raw here, they had been teasing for a couple of weeks that Hogan was going to have a major announcement on Raw, and you get right into it, and he announces this great concept to me, this 30-man over-the-top rope, Andre the Giant Battle Royale for WrestleMania 30. Now, I understand some people are sitting there saying, why can't they have money in the bank? Why can't they have money in the bank? That'll be a better match. We already had a 30-man Battle Royale. It's called the Royal Rumble in January. Look, and I get that, and I understand that. Now, are we going to get some type of finish like a Bad News Brown and uh, Bret the Hitman Hart at WrestleMania 4? Uh, I don't know when it comes to that trophy. That trophy looked kind of cool. But I think this is a great kind of ode to pay to somebody, a legend, a real kind of uh, trailblazer for the WWE and Andre the Giant. It's also important, I think, to educate younger fans about the importance of the history of the company and the history of the business with one of the most iconic figures and biggest stars the business has ever seen and will ever see in Andre the Giant. And as far as this match goes, to me, I'm all about getting as many people on the roster a WrestleMania payout as you possibly can. Look, I understand in theory a Money in the Bank match may, might be better, but... Instead of having, you know, let's say six, eight, or ten guys in a feature WrestleMania match, now you've got 30. So many of these guys that you love that never get any tick on TV are going to get some tick at the biggest pay-per-view of the entire year. Whether that's pre-show or on the actual show, I don't know yet. I would assume if Hogan actually announced this, this is actually going to be a part of the actual WrestleMania card itself. But that will remain to be seen. Hogan botched in his promo again this week. It doesn't matter because ultimately what he needed to do he did, and he announced this concept, he announced this match, and really, I think, cemented it as one of the potential featured kind of drawing card matches heading into WrestleMania 30. I'm 100% down with this, and no, not just because Hogan announced it, brother. Now, after Hogan made his big announcement, here comes John Cena, and initially, of course, I had to uh, fight back the vomit that was coming up from my stomach region. However, it was one thing that was really striking to me, it, and I don't care what anybody says. It is truly a shame that we will never get John Cena versus a Hulk Hogan at a WrestleMania. You want to talk about once-in-a-lifetime opportunities. This is a, like a once-in-eternity match that unfortunately never happened, and it's a shame. It was something I was thinking about as this whole thing was going on. I understand a lot of people don't like what Cena did in his promo with Bray Wyatt, where Bray Wyatt is being very serious and doing Bray Wyatt stuff and doing an incredible job of it. Cena is kind of being his hokey type of make fun of everything and completely invalidate anything serious that Bray Wyatt said. Again, this is Cena. You know what you're dealing with here. You've been doing this crap for a damn decade now. And let's face it. The demographic that he's appealing to, the young women and the kids usually are into that type of stuff. He, they love that type of stuff. Now, will it get more serious as we get closer to WrestleMania? Oh, I'm sure it will. I didn't have a problem with what Cena said here in this particular case, even if it was nothing great. 
I actually think now that I've seen it a little bit more that there's an incredibly interesting dynamic working between Bray Wyatt and John Cena and makes it a perfect kind of featured feud heading into WrestleMania 30. He faces Eric Rowan and they have their match and that's all fine and good. And then I will say this, Bray Wyatt is many things, but one thing he is not is an idiot. He knew with Hogan out there, none of those shenanigans were going to happen. And he knew deep down inside that if he went in there, Hulkamania was going to run wild all over them in Memphis, Tennessee, brother. Thanks to all of you this past Sunday that checked out the inaugural edition of the OTRS Central Podcast on Blog Talk Radio. If you haven't listened to it yet, make sure you check it out. You can listen to it archived. The link is in the description box down below. Coming up Wednesday, March 12th at 9 p.m. Eastern, my special guest is going to be none other than Fool Killer. That's right, Fool Killer. And we're going to be talking about all things TNA the first hour. And then the second hour, you will have the chance to call in and ask whatever questions you want answered by the Schleich Daddy. The link to that show, which happens tomorrow, Wednesday, March 12, 2014 at 9 p.m. Eastern, is in the description box down below. One of the great things to me about Undertaker only appearing during WrestleMania season is the fact that it instantly elevates the profile of WrestleMania because it's important enough for Undertaker to be there. And then, of course, you got the whole streak and all of this and all of that. Now, they were talking about Undertaker had some big, epic, groundbreaking announcement, which apparently, I guess, was supposed to be that Brock's going to rest in peace at WrestleMania 30. I don't know. And maybe some people are disappointed by that. I don't know. But here's what I do know, is that this segment between Paul Heyman and The Undertaker made for incredible television. Paul Heyman sits there and talks about The Undertaker and just how historic what he has done is and compares him to the people like the Cena's and the Hogan's and the Austin's and the Rock's and leaving out the edges apparently for whatever reason. Talking about how many matches they won in a row and how special it is that Undertaker has done this which will make it even more special when Brock Lesnar does it at WrestleMania 30 and ends the streak. This is a tremendous job by Paul Heyman to me of building up anticipation and excitement for this big-time featured WrestleMania money match, which Lesnar and Taker clearly is, by building up the opponent to sit there and build up Brock Lesnar even more. This was great television. It's one of those examples of sometimes... Keep it simple, stupid, and that's when it's the most effective. Speaking of WrestleMania, all throughout the month of March here on OTRS Central, myself, the Schleg Daddy, is doing the WrestleMania review series. If you're a fan of old wrestling, if you're a fan of the history of WrestleMania, if you like talk about the old WrestleManias, make sure you check out my WrestleMania review series, like I said, going on all throughout the month of March. The link to that playlist is in the description box down below. Check it out. Click on it after this video. Do it! Do it! I kind of like the dynamic that the WWE is working with the Shield head heading into WrestleMania 30, excuse me, where they tease the breakup, and now they're kind of teasing that they're uniting again and coming under one common banner, only eventually to really do the breakup. And that's good. I, I like how they're doing this here, assuming that's where they're ultimately going. Now, does that mean they're going to have a triple threat for the U.S. title at WrestleMania 30? Are they going to all three of them be in the 30-man Andre the Giant on over-the-top rope battle royale? I don't know yet. We'll see. My disappointment, though, with the Shield versus the Rhodes brothers is that apparently, and this match was really good. It was a highlight of the show in terms of a match, for me at least. Um, it's just really a shame, apparently, that the WWE is not going there with Cody Rhodes and Goldust having a singles match at WrestleMania 30. I think these two guys, and in particular Goldust, since he's come back, have been outstanding. They've been putting on great matches, and I think out of respect to both of these talented performers, they deserve to have the spotlight of having a one-on-one -on -one match at WrestleMania 30. I really hope the WWE comes to their senses and has this match because it's a perfect time for it. It was a perfect time for it a couple of years ago. It's a perfect time for it now. Just please do it. I might just be a dog to a lot of you, but I'm more than that. I'm Roman Reigns' biggest fan. And all I know is, is that Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins better back down and step aside for true greatness, and that's Roman Reigns. Smokey once told me before he passed away that if you want something, you got to go take it. And you got to make everybody understand why it's best for business. Roman Reigns 
is a future superstar. Oh, and he's such a hunk, so easy on the eyes. I want him to scratch my scooter and pull my ears. Roman Reigns is going to win the 30-man battle royal at WrestleMania 30. Hell yeah, bitches. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are expecting me to come on here and give this big, long, drawn-out, typical Schleg Daddy intricate bullshit statement about hashtag Occupy Raw on this week's show. Well, you're not going to get that here. That I will save for another time. You're just going to have to wait. And I'll let you know when that time comes and I will talk all about it in great depth and detail, I promise you. But here's what I can say. Part of the thing that I always feel is important when it comes to professional wrestling is not always just the in-ring stuff. Yeah, matches are important. Having quality matches is important. There's no question about that. Character development is important. Storylines are important. What's most important to me a lot of times is giving us memorable moments. Those moments that will last a lifetime. Those moments that will sit there and get us as fans jealous because we wish we were there. That, to me, is what hashtag Occupy Raw represented on this week's show. You know, as far as the WWE, make no mistake about it. This is an audible, but it's the right audible. Make no mistake about it to me, I still feel some uncertainty about the what the WWE ultimately has planned. And I will, like I said, I promise sometime this week, talk about it in great depth and detail and let you know when I do. But there is no doubt about this, is that hashtag Occupy Raw, this whole segment, it was the WWE taking what the people said and making it their own and making it work. And that's what Vince McMahon's ultimate genius is, is taking other people's ideas, doing it his way, and making it better. And that's exactly what he did. He took ownership of it, and he made it work for him, because he's a fucking genius. That's why. God, this was an awesome segment. One of the better Raw segments I have seen in a long, long time. I wish we got more segments that even came close, or even sniffed the stratosphere of this. What a signature moment for a Daniel Bryan, no matter what happens throughout the rest of 2014 and beyond. One thing that cannot be taken away from him here is this segment, is this moment. Triple H was awesome here, doing what God does. Stephanie McMahon gave me a heart on the way she was talking. Fucking incredible. And Daniel Bryan and all these people sitting there and occupying Raw made for outstanding television. I was a little surprised that this didn't close out the show. But you know what? Again, I will talk about that at another time. I'm not going to ruin anybody's moment right now. I'm not going to sit there and poop on anything because this is the type of stuff that you should get on the road to WrestleMania. This is the type of stuff that creates an experience that makes people want to go there. This is the type of stuff that could potentially make huge international superstars. In the case of Daniel Bryan, this right here is where the WWE has a chance and an opportunity that I wasn't sure that they were ever going to grant, if they were ever going to seize. We're going to find out if they do, but they've taken a big step, in my opinion, in the right direction. Mark is smart here. And there are two things in this world that I love above all else. Number one, Daniel motherfucking Bryan. And number two, exposing phony Daniel Bryan fans because I, Marcus Smart, am Daniel Bryan's number one fan. Of course, when it comes to phony Daniel Bryan fans, there's none bigger than Deluxe Man. Now let me ask you this. Did Deluxe Man start a petition at WhiteHouse.org to get Daniel Bryan in the... WWE World Heavyweight Championship match at WrestleMania 30? No, Marcus Smart did. Did Deluxe Man say he wouldn't rest until Daniel Bryan was put in the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match at WrestleMania 30? No, Marcus Smart did. In fact, that poser wannabe Deluxe Man, Daniel Bryan fan, sat there and said he would be okay with Triple H and Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 30, and that's it. No, I say that's ridiculous and that's stupid. If Bret Hart, as great and awesome of a legend as he was, can do two matches at WrestleMania 30, me personally, I think Daniel Bryan should do three matches at WrestleMania 30. 
first he should beat God to open the show. You know, Triple H is God, and that's all fine and good. But even God isn't Daniel Bryan, because Daniel Bryan is one of the best motherfucker wrestlers in the world. And then in the middle of the show, we get a surprise appearance out of the crowd by CM Punk. And then another surprise appearance by AJ Styles. And then Daniel Bryan comes out and puts his title shot on the line. And then they have a 60-minute triple threat Iron Man classic that would be a five-star epic match that could only be better if it was in Japan. Oh, my God. And then he'll go on to main event WrestleMania 30 and pin Batista and become the WWE World Heavyweight Champion because that's what this situation demands. Mark is smart, is a man of action. I am a leader. And as you can clearly see on this week's Raw, the WWE followed the lead of me. They understood the importance of me protesting them. And they said they don't want any of that. Not since Smokey has anybody caused more fear and trepidation amongst the WWE than Marcus Smart has. And they knew what the consequences could be if I didn't stream WrestleMania 30 and my followers didn't. And they knew it would be bad news bears. So they did it. And they gave us this awesome moment and my hand may have occupied my trouser region because Occupy Raw is awesome, and Daniel Bryan is awesome, because in fact, Daniel Bryan is the best motherfucker wrestler in the world. And Deluxe Man, you can eat shit. Frankly, after the hashtag Occupy Raw uh, segment, I kind of got deflated, honestly, and it was like, I, like I said, I was really surprised that this didn't close out the show, because how was anything else really going to follow that up, including the main event tag between Batista and Orton versus Big Show and Daniel Bryan? I'm um, kind of curious. They put Big Show in there, of all people. But, hey, whatever. And, you know, Daniel Bryan, he validates what happened earlier in the night. He gets his moment. He gets the pinfall victory. And the people in Memphis and the people watching around the world get to go, yes, 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 and enjoy their moment and enjoy their night. And, ultimately, that's what I look for on the road to WrestleMania. It's those things that make us watching at home wish we were there. It's those things that last a lifetime. It's those things that make us understand and believe that something special is going to happen at WrestleMania because this is the showcase of showcases. This is the biggest show in the business. This is one of the biggest events in sports and entertainment, and it doesn't matter. And like I said, this was not a great Raw in terms of a lot of great in-ring action and three hours of awesomeness all throughout that kept me captivated. No, and it didn't need to be. The WWE did their job in my eyes this week and did it very, very well. 